So where would uh where would Doctor Strange rank in your top ten lists of Marvel films? Oh, it wouldn't be on the top ten. Oh wow, is that should I should I lie? No 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 he no, no. no. he's confused <laughs> now. He's <laughs> real. No, I, and I have no frame of reference beyond but I do. that, so I can't. And I, and, and, wow. Okay. Now you're you're talking about the MCU, right? Not every other Marvel, Mar- not Howard the Duck or anything. You're talking about like just strictly MCU. Yeah, just MCU. Just MCU. Okay, all right. What is your number 10? I don't even want to know your number one. What's your number 10? If that's not your top 10, what is number 10? I don't know what number 10 is, but I definitely have my go-to favorites. And I think that, but, you know, that's that's what's great about Marvel is, like, there's something for everyone a little bit. True. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really like the, the Captain America movies are so, I think Winter Soldier and Civil War are, like, almost the gold standard. <laughs> that's the number two on his list. Because it's the, it's the Russo brothers. They also directed Community, and I love Community. And I think it's just like, for, for me, if that's just like where it needs to be. But to be fair, you know, Doctor Strange in a lot of ways is the future of where Marvel's going. It's going into the magic and the multiverse and all that stuff. And so, and Captain America, you know, he's done. I mean, not spoilers, I guess, but, you know, we're done with that. You know, we're done, you know, so we're going into this new age. So I think it's kind of cool that you got to now see Doctor Strange. I think you're going to appreciate where things go even more because, you know, Doctor Strange 2 is coming along, Multiverse of Madness, and that's where right. that's where it's all going down. Right, and that's it's the first, I, it'll be the first film, to Doctor Strange 2 will be the first film to do the direct tie-in from the MCU as far as the TV shows and that, because uh, Olsen, Olsen, if we can call her Olsen, uh, Scarlet Witch will be there. He, you're blowing his mind right now by saying he wants to know, he's going to ask you, email him later, what's your top <laughs> ten, because he this is his number one. He's looking like, it's my only one. <laughs> he's only seeing three. I'm joking. <laughs> All right, so let, let's let's let me dive right into your Doctor Strange knowledge. Then I'm gonna throw some. I mean, a yeah, pop quiz, hot shot. We use that's one of our segments, but we're, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you now. I'm gonna actually close the book. So this is gonna just be from my mind to your mind. We're just gonna uh, do this right uh, there. Hold on a second before you do that, because I'm my mind is still blown by the fact that you said that the director of Community did Winter Soldier. Yeah, but I told you that Russo brother. See, here's the thing: the first Captain America was cool. When the Russo, I've said I, that's why I know you weren't listening. The, I told you the Russo brothers. And in fairness, I didn't know they directed Community, so we're good here. Oh. But that when for some reason when they took over with Cap, Cap Winter Soldier is is a top three fucking Marvel film, dude. And I'm so fucking pissed that I've not. They've done Sebastian so wrong ever since that film. Like he's not he's not badass anymore. He was the kill, coldest killer in the fucking I'm world. Never ending like, story, huh? Top tier action. Top tier action, but then he goes from fucking people handing them AR twenties and doing all this shit and catching the shield. Now every time we see him, he's just holding up a raccoon, shooting guns. Like man, give him some fucking justice. I, I tried to watch that. I didn't watch Winter Soldier because I tried to watch Captain America, whatever the first one was. You know, that's a. That, I feel like that's a rough one for a lot of people. I think it's important for the overall story, but. I'll agree. It's it should be like a the prequel. They should let us see Winter Soldier and then like until the f- next one came out, then gave us the first Avenger. Make it a prequel. <laughs> they would have they yeah. put it this way, bro. They would have if we'd have never got the first one after he died in this one, spoiler alert, they would have ate that shit up if they would have gave us the prequel. They would have ate it up. Exactly. Ate it up. That's true. That's true. But you know, everyone loves everyone loves their origin stories. They do. That's what I liked about Doctor Strange was it it tricked me into I I was invested in the character before it became a comic book film. And the acting was just so good. It was. It was. That's why I enjoyed Iron Man because the directing with John Favre and Robert Downey Jr.'s acting was just mm-hmm. it was incredible for a movie, not just a comic book movie, but for a movie in general. But I'm gonna tell you, yeah. but to be honest with you, Christopher Nolan had a lot to do with how the MCU had to start taking it serious, and that's the one thing. That's the one thing that they can hold over Marvel. That's the only thing I think they can hold over Marvel is that when Christopher Nolan took over Batman, he said, "I want it set in a real world." We can do it. We'll still put all of it in it. And so Iron Man made you feel like it's in a real war. They, they played on Afghanistan. They played on the heart. Proof that Tony Stark has a heart. So all of those things happen. If you notice, that's why you got to go back and watch, like he said, 22, 23 films. Because if I'm not mistaken, help me out here. And Winter Soldier, as he was just talking about, is the first time we hear the name Doctor Strange, Doctor Stephen Strange in the uh, in the in the multi in the universe. Am I, am I correct? Yeah. That's like that's a deep cut. Yeah, I, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, like. When they're uh, targeting the uh, potential threats, the Hydra, right. you know, right. take, taking Sky over uh, whatever those are called, the helicarriers. And they, mm-hmm. they do mention Stephen Strange. So, you know, that was where they started to get into the more Easter eggs. Um, mm-hmm. And I think going back to what you were saying in terms of, you know, Iron Man and, and I think Christopher Nolan's Batman's definitely set a, a new standard, a new tone. Um, and then and I think Iron Man was super relevant at the time, you know, dealing with, you know, terrorism and dealing with, you know, corrupt um, 
corporations. That was literally the summer of 2008. So I think it was just like, I think that's also what got people just like hyper relevant. And a lot, and a lot of, of what other people talk about too, is that Robert Downey Jr. is like, personal life is so mirroring the character of Tony Stark in terms of battling, you know, alcoholism and other issues. So I think like, I don't know, it's just kind of like this perfect storm, you know, and yes, you know, kind of like us, just kind of like us today. You know what I mean? Yeah. What blew my mind about, and I know this is about Dr. Strange, but Iron Man, what blew my mind about that movie was at the end of it, like I grew up with superheroes that were all about anonymity, Superman, Batman, like at the end of uh, Iron Man, he's just like, I am Iron Man. I'm like, where the hell do you go from there? <laughs> After they told him not to say it, but that's what made him badass. Yeah. It's just, yeah, he's, just, he's, just, he's badass, man. I like- I, again, going back to the director as a community during Winter <laughs> Soldier, because I saw something on IMDb, and I don't know if you can confirm this or not, but because I, I, I trust IMDb about as far as I can throw a couch. But I saw in there that Dan Harmon uh, was like a uncredited ghostwriter on uh on doctor strange as far as like the revisions and everything did, did you ever hear that uh dan Harmon, the writer oh, the writer okay. community creator okay. community okay. i mean you know it's it's i i've heard you know with these marvel movies such a big production it's possible he got his hands on that script especially with his relationship to the russo brothers and then to marvel you know you never know if you want to feel like a superhero or a supervillain, check out Aimbot Energy. They are locally produced right here in Jacksonville, Florida, locally owned and operated. They uh, produce a, a healthy alternative to energy drinks that doesn't give you the sluggish feeling when it wears off. You mean the crash? The crash. The oh. three o'clock crash. It is 100% natural. They use a perfect balance of nootropic to enhance your focus and multitasking, your memory and your critical thinking, your blood flow, because that is actually important. Does it help serotonin? It does help the serotonin, and I would I would use it specifically just for that if that was the only nootropic in uh, Aimba Energy. Aimba has zero sugars, zero calories for those of you that care about that kind of stuff. It comes in four flavors, blue raspberry, fruit punch, green apple, and straw kiwi. This stuff is so powerful that they recommend if you are a new user of Aimbot, you only use half the bottle because a full bottle will kick your ass. Right now with our discount code, you can get a four pack for under 10 bucks. You can get 40, which is regularly $100, for $85. So go right now to aimbotenergy.com slash discount slash TTFT. Support Aimbot Energy, local business, support our show, independent, we're all happy, and you are the best version of yourself. Aimbot Energy. David, why roll your bot when you can aim your bot? When you subscribe, it'll last longer.